said, I'm not going to leave here because I'm the only one up here. There's nobody else that lives up here in the wintertime. So he's just going to have to run from it off this lake, and I'm not going to go. No magma has yet come to the surface, but this means that it is heating up, so magma conceivably is rising. In combination with the seismic precursors we've seen, it looks like there's a very good chance that there will be an eruption. The geologists knew it was coming, something, but no one expected what happened at 8.32, Sunday morning, May 18, 1980. The mountain blew up. The ice of ancient glaciers became a torrent of boiling mud. Everything in the river's path was swept away. Farmers, loggers, and campers in the river valley were moved to higher ground. Dad, you want to go to uh, Bob? I'd rather go to uh, Kellen? Floyd. Come on out, Santa. Go Mushroom cloud of ash and black smoke soared 10 miles above the Cascades. The ash is extremely slick on a roadway, makes a very hazardous condition. Visibility is down to zero. In the cities east of the mountain, 
the sun was snuffed out. A terrifying darkness at noon, as ash fell like snow. At least 25 people were dead. 40 others were missing. The beautiful mountain with the perfect white cone had blasted and carved a new wasteland. I had made up my mind I was going to make it. But the wife and my friend wanted to give up and I couldn't turn it. Just, I don't know. It's hard for me to even realize what has happened. Dawn on Monday broke like the first day on a strange new planet. Up the Toodle River Valley, the destruction was complete. Spirit Lake and the lodge where Harry Truman had entertained reporters were covered by mud and ash. And still the mountain poured out thick black clouds. The weather satellite tracked the cloud of gray ash to Spokane and then Montana and Wyoming. By midweek, it had reached the East Coast. But most of all, it had reached Eastern Washington. fell on the apple trees and on the animals and on those with nowhere to go. 
got any place to go? Right. Like going to church? Might not be a bad idea. Yeah, it'd be a good idea for some people, not for me. Well, at least it gets you out of this. Huh? At least it gets you out of this. Yeah. Oh, it ain't bad out here. It ain't good either. I'm sorry, the road is closed from here any further east. Okay. This is as far east as you can go. Right. You have to pull up here in the town. There was no reason to move and no way to get there. good news was that the ash might not harm the crops. The bad news, no one knew when the skies would clear again. West of the mountains, survivors were devastated by what they saw. Part of the house is still standing, and we left with the shirts on our back. I like to get back in. We all had visions of being filled with cars, just filling with ash, and we didn't really know. I think that was the biggest thing, you know. What does this mean, and what's going to happen? It was as scary as scary gets, because... You didn't know what was coming out of the sky. You couldn't see. It was hard to breathe. The kids were crying, saying, Daddy, are we going to be all right? And I guess the answer was, yeah, we are, but we have a lot of work to do, and we got to do it together. That's what I told my kids. It's just hang together, and we do it together. And uh, yeah, I was scared to death. We recommend you do not go into the area. We go anyway, or you go, there is no rescue, and I cannot guarantee your life will be saved because this one is a hundred plus feet deep. Okay. It just doesn't even seem real. I see pictures of what we went through, and it just when the people in the helicopter took us back up there, they could not believe that we climbed out of it. They just could not believe it. It was just terrible. You, didn't, you couldn't imagine the destruction, the total devastation of it all. Within, it happened within 10 seconds, and it was all gone. <laughs> Search and rescue teams looked for life in the moonscape and found some. More often, they found death. There were some pack, some people packed in up here uh, from on Ryan Lake, and their two pack horses are dead, and their their vehicles are there and everything. But I think they must have got them out. The people, Although there is a dead man there. There's a a dead man. Yeah. The governor had asked for federal disaster relief, and the president came to take a look.
I don't know that there's in recorded history in our nation that has ever been a more formidable explosion. It is literally indescribable, and it's a devastation. I've never seen or heard of anything like this before. Somebody said it looked like a, a moonscape, mm -hmm. but the moon looks like a golf course compared to uh, <laughs> compared to what's up there. The damage was more than could be absorbed in a single helicopter ride. Miles of the Columbia and Cowlitz River shipping lanes had turned to mud. The Corps of Engineers estimated a $200 million dredging job. On the side of the mountain, half a billion dollars worth of timber struck down. In Yakima alone, the ash cleanup cost four and a half million dollars. The government appropriated a billion dollars in disaster aid, but who could really count the loss? And still the mountain boiled. It would erupt twice again in the next month, showering ash over Portland and Olympia, Washington. Weeks later, scientists got their first good look at Mount St. Helens. 1,400 feet of mountaintop was gone. Historically, this young volcano had always been the most active in the chain of a dozen volcanoes, the Indian spun legends around the fiery mountain. But this eruption, this blast, the equal of a 50 megaton bomb, was the most dramatic in at least 500 years. The horseshoe shaped crater was evidence. It is the nature of volcanoes to rebuild themselves. It is true of this mountain. Thick lava is pushing its way to the surface like toothpaste from a tube. Someday, decades from now, the lava may form a new mountain wall. But for now, the yawning crater is a sinister presence, so different from the symmetrical beauty admired by generations of visitors. A beauty gone, probably for our lifetime. Reporter Jeff Renner has watched and listened to the mountain since it first rumbled to life in the late winter of 1980. Months have passed since Mount St. Helens first began to rumble. Many of the people and events are now just a blur. But there are some images we'll never forget, such as the first day we flew over the once symmetrical cone and saw that there was an opening in the top and that steam was pouring forth and that half the mountain was covered with a thick black coat of ash. There was a Today, we stood at the Timberline Camp at 4,500 feet and felt earthquakes shake the ground beneath us as though we were standing on a trampoline. There was the carnival atmosphere of the t-shirt merchants and the sightseers and the Hawaiian barbecue chicken stands. There was a pleasure of meeting Harry Truman and enjoying his antics and of reaffirming a friendship with geologist Dave Johnston, who I'd first met two years ago when we climbed Mount Baker together. But on May 18th, that dream went sour. I remember the shock 
and the horror when we saw how this Tootle River Valley had been laid to waste by the powerful mud flow, and how Spirit Lake, beautiful Spirit Lake, had been turned into a cesspool of floating logs and ash and mud, and knowing that somewhere underneath all that was probably Harry Truman. And then the shock of hearing that our friend Dave Johnston, the geologist, was among the missing and presumed dead. I also remember the breathless description of a deputy sheriff over our helicopter radio of how he had to helplessly watch tourists being crushed in their cars by the advancing mud flow, and there was nothing he could do. We are very proud of our technology, our instruments, our computers, and our own intelligence, Yet they were no match for the mountain that day. Mount St. Helens, if nothing else, has shown us how close we really live to the cutting edge of nature, no matter where we live. There are people buried in the ash we'll never know. But there's the face of a friend that lingers, a man as much a part of the mountain as the once perfect cone. Well, I haven't got an offer, but I've got a, a dozen friends that wrote me from every state in the union that said that they wrote the re real people, people, Joe, and they want me on it. I just got this yesterday from a friend of mine that used to, uh, it was a girl, girl scout up here 50 years ago, and they saw it back in New York, and she mailed this in. Uh, this is, uh, is from the uh, 31st New York Times, and it shows me in the front page, of course, and of course they give me quite a write up about me and the old mountain. I should have, I, I, Harry I, Truman I, lived on the lake with his cats and his letters from admirers all over the country. He passed the spring measuring earthquakes and talking to the curious folks who dropped in with their helicopters. They bank right in here. Of course, hundreds of them stopped and talked to me, but there's been hundreds and hundreds of flights over there that they, they just saw as okay. They knew us all right. So in 15 minutes, they go back and said, hell, the old man's all right. He's just struggling around there. 90% of the time I'd wave at him and have a coca in my hand. So they knew, they knew it was healthy. Just a Coke? <laughs> well, just a Coke. A little shindies in it. Thank you. 